welcome everybody to the stand-up meeting for Open Research Institute for 14th of June, 2022. What we do is we talk about what we've done over the past week, what we are going to do over the next week, if we need any resources, and if we have hit any roadblocks and, and therefore need help. And let's hand it off to, to James to talk to us about uh, anything going on at Remote Lab South and the, but mainly the, the plans for the future and what's needed. And I think I, I definitely know that there, there needs to be some funds transferred in order to uh, make some, some capital improvements to the site. Uh, so that's, that's what I know from my end and uh, the floor is yours. All right. Um, as, every, as Michelle mentioned earlier, I'm James Kilo Juliet 7 Kilo Delta Echo. I'm the technician for ORI at Remote Lab South situated here in Arkansas. And as Michelle mentioned, we are working on getting a proper lab space set up in a barn that we have on some of the property here uh, that was previously being used as office space. So there's, so there's a number of things already in place for some of the lab things we want to do. However, the barn has fallen into a slight state of disrepair due, uh, from a few years of not being used. And a lot of our funding needs here are in regards to that. While we're cleaning things up and drying things out, the roof of the barn needs to have a new coat of sealant applied to it. And that's gonna be one of the big things that we need um, capital for, as currently we don't have any equipment that would allow us to do that, to do that ourselves. And so we're trying to look to see if there's anyone we could hire that we can use for that, but we need to get some of the capital to go and get those people is our current thing there. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, being familiar with the property and the the resource, I think that this will this will work. Um, and so, what we had been talking about doing is is building a separate shop uh, on the property, and also building the separately um, building some interferometry uh, dishes and and some infrastructure for that as well. So that's a that's a separate endeavor, but it actually does kind of work into the remote lab south because it will be. Uh, able to support some citizen science for astronomy, uh, interferometry-based astronomy. And so having an additional resource out there, uh, at least according to Sarah and other organizations that do this work, would be greatly appreciated. So we're we're looking towards incorporating that at Remote Lab South, along with the barn improvements that would allow us to field all of the equipment and and um, and get a, a FPGA stations up and running, and also a uh, bio medicine or, or um, biological lab for, for bacteriophage. So all of that stuff is under discussion. And if you're interested in that, then uh, join the lists at openresearch.institute and, uh, and get in touch if you, you'd like to keep up. Okay, so yeah, we'll, we'll work on the, the particular improvements for the roof in order to get it in line. And, and I think there's some other, other stuff and it looked reasonable and we'll move forward. All right, any other requests or roadblocks or, or anything that you've noticed along the way? Uh, nothing in particular. Pretty much the funding to get those repairs done so that we can start moving equipment over and start doing some real buildup of our infrastructure here is our big current goal. And I'm excited to see what we'll bring from it. Cool. All right. Looking forward to it. Thanks so much. All right. Hey, Anshul, uh, you have the floor. Yes. Hi. So uh, regarding uh, Vice at Tune Express um, had a des design discussion with Bob and Art. That's uh, progressing well. Uh, design wise, it's progressing well. Uh, I had few doubts and it's all got clarified. So, but <clears throat> we are stuck due to non availability of Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, we did discuss if we can get Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 with two gig of RAM, but there are a few concerns whether we will be able to run our software on those uh, modules. So yeah, there we are. Mm. And apart from that, for FPGA, for DBBS2 testing stuff, again, I reached out to Everest and uh, I think he's still busy. Um, I think it's enough of asking for help. Um, uh, I'm thinking that uh, I will develop, I will try to develop some modules with which I should be able to test. Um, so we'll dig deeper and find a way forward. 
apart from that, Michelle, I, uh, I did set up the work directory for you. So you're good to go. So yeah, that's me. Thank you. That's a lot. Yeah. Thanks so much for yeah. the VersaTuner work. It's, um, it's going to be great. I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> looking forward to that. Do you think, um, mm -hmm. just, just based on, on your, your experience mm -hmm. and, and where, since you know, the mm -hmm. details of the, mm -hmm. the project, do you think that there, the, the team members might be interested in a demonstration in August at DEF CON or is that a little too early? Uh, I mean, um, there was a there was a conference last month and art couldn't demo anything due to unavailability of pi4 uh, okay so supply uh, chain it sounds yeah, like supply, supply chain, chain. okay so yes. so just if if you were able to have if we're able to kind of find because you know who knows hmm. sometimes you can find them and sometimes you can't but if we were able to find some raspberry pi 4s um what would have to still be done? Would that be the only thing that would be needed in order to demonstrate or would there still be additional time for development? At this stage of development, we are at a stage where we can demo something uh, if Pi4 is available, not the complete product, but yes, we we are in a demoable state if we okay. get Pi4. All right, so the, the gating item or the critical path is supply chain with yes. Raspberry Pi4? Yep. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Um, I'm, I, we'll, we're all facing the same thing out there, but but there's there's some folks I can ask and I'll, I'll see what I can do to try to get sure. this to where we can maybe show it off in August mm. uh, to, yep. to, to, I think the crowd would really appreciate it at, at DEF CON, it's the right match. Yeah, yeah. A, a okay. question on that? Would it be possible to use the Pi 400? Sorry, it's me. It's for me. Yes. Would it be possible to use a Pi 400, the Pi 4 compute module in a keyboard operation? Because those are available. Uh, Pi 4, uh, what we, we, we need, uh, uh, Art has developed an enclosure and he needs Pi 4 to fit in it okay. so that it we'll, can interface we'll with the it. interface board. And uh, also he has developed some connections, hardware connections between his interface module and Pi4. So any deviation to that, we are finding it difficult to adjust. Okay, wouldn't yeah. be handy then. Yeah. Cool, okay, thanks. I'll see what I can do and yep. um, yeah. Okay, and I'd like to, to oh, you, you're very welcome. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Ken Easton, an ASIC and FPGA designer who will be helping with whatever we need to do next. We were going to start work on the decoder um, since we're, rel we're, we're pretty happy with the, the encoder because it passed an awful lot of tests and has been looked at uh, pretty well. So we'll, we'll see. That will, of course, continue and will continue to improve it. But since the encoder is in decent shape, we started looking at the decoder. Uh, it looks like that we're actually, that, that, uh, that Ken's going to look at the scheduler uh, first. And that is probably something that's going to be done in firmware or software uh, that will be the thing that manages which baseband frames get put onto the encoder in what order with what priority. And so the uh, a scheduler can be very simple. It can be a FIFO or it can be a little more complicated. And that's where we're kind of going since we have quality of service goals. And since we have adaptive coding and modulation, just makes kind of sense to have a, a more capable scheduler. Um, so so he's here and thank you very much for coming, Ken. Um, okay. the, yeah, thanks so much. Um, we'll, we'll publish a, a lot more on that and everyone's welcome to, to pitch in there. Uh, and the reason why we kind of skipped over the decoder is that there's really good news about the decoder from Amit Inan. So he wrote a decoder uh, for DVB-S2, and I think it might go to S2X, but I'd have to double check. Uh, but there's been interest uh, in this from, from an external organization, and they're collaborating with us to make it, to bring it up to snuff. Um, so it's not quite uh, at, at the point where I guess it, should be the, the external organization was having a little bit of trouble figuring it out and and they uh, reached out and asked for help and so there's going to be a, a productive open source collaboration that will result in a good decoder so we're very happy about this it puts us much further than we thought 
um, this decoder for DVB S2 uh, or S2X would be something that the downlink receiver or the ground station receiver would, would get. Um, but in terms of the transponder, since we have the encoder on the downlink and we've been working hard on uplink definition and getting uh, at least a general purpose computing um, implementation going, the next step is to then go to what, what in VHDL do we need to do for the transponder to receive the uplink? This involves a uh, polyphase channelizer and some, some fancy footwork in the, the DMOD and decode. Um, and that's, that's the thing that we're going to try to close the loop on uh, here in the next week. Um, let's see, the immediate trouble, uh, Anshul has written a great repository that lets you pull in the uh, DVB FPGA encoder Okay, so this is on the, the downlink side from the transponder. And also the analog devices entire reference design for, for the ZC706, where the 9371 board is located. And Anshul can get it to make and build, and I can't, and we're still trying to figure out why. Um, we have seen evolutions in, in the HDL from analog devices. The reference design has been revved up to, to where it can run under um, Vivado 2021. Maybe this is a tools issue, but our goal is to like get at a point where anybody can go download a repository, go to the right place, hit make, and then they can play with it too. And we're not there yet. So that's what I've been trying to get to happen. Um, another aspect of this is feeding the encoder with the right data uh, with DMA is not trivial. Um, I haven't been able to pull it off yet, but Leonard uh, Deguez, uh, one of the other volunteers, came over on Sunday, and we had a very good work session, and we have a strategy and some resources, and we're just going to push through and make sure that we can feed the encoder properly with baseband frames so that it transmits over the air, and we can verify our design over the air. And that is the start of the scheduler, because the baseband frames being sent to the encoder, that's what the scheduler is in charge of. So we're starting to see the entire system come together and integrate. There's still some things that are simply not there. They don't exist. So the scheduler exists in our minds or in a transport stream file from Ron Economos, and that's it. So we know what we need to do, and we're, we're getting to the point where we're grappling around with the tools that will let us do it. And so far, we've had all of the usual tools problems with version mismatch or you know not not understanding how things hook up or or what have you so lots of progress but uh, not the demo's not done yet uh, so Michelle you have help available where we can uh, you said uh, Leonard where he will help us to feed the data yeah he was encoder. he was very helpful he is very sympathetic at our plight and he says that mm -hmm. even you know uh, this is this is hard stuff. So we have a mm -hmm. advanced dev board and an advanced radio card, and neither one of these companies has it, yeah. has the best documentation. <laughs> so, yes. so it's a little difficult to sort through and figure out what you need to do. It's um, the way that we we talk about this here is is that there's lots of um, you know artists when they draw and sketch. Uh, there's there's these tutorials, and so mm -hmm. uh, we talk about this in terms of the owl drawing, like the bird, mm -hmm. the owl. Um, you draw a couple of circles, and that's your your first step, and then the second step is a completely drawn owl, and it's <laughs> like there you go. And so that's how it, sometimes it feels learning FPGA design is because they give you they spend a lot of time with the hello world. And yeah. yes, we can get the hello world stuff working. And then the rest is like a PhD thesis and there's yeah. nothing in between. <laughs> so our, our goal is as soon as we figure out, figure this out, that we explain it thoroughly and make it really as possible as we, as we can for, for other people mm -hmm. to use this stuff. Cause it's, okay. it, it gives you great superpowers to be able to do this. But so Leonard was super helpful. And I think that you know, with a little bit of encouragement and confidence, we can figure out how to properly feed everything and get a get the processor side in shape. And there's also other, another good set of news for the processor side. So Everest is, oh, I think it's on vacation. So he's off in the mountains skiing, I think. And, and while he was skiing, he also recorded a video for Friedrichshafen about the Pluto work. And so our, our work will be in a video shown at the SDR forums at Friedrichshafen. And it's, it's very good. Um, 
we're very happy that this everything works and and that's great um but he he has not yet published the processor side stuff but he will so he said yes i know i'm 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 holding you know holding this for now but like it, it will all get published as soon as he has time so that's kind of the anchor point for for moving up to the larger uh chip on the on the zc706 is like if it works on the pluto and we can see a, a a reference design on the Pluto with how everything works over the air, then I think it'll help out kind of a lot because every has a lot mm -hmm. of, of experience here. So it's just been a question of his time has been very limited and he knows uh, that that we need the the uh, processor side published and and he's he he has spent his free time uh, making sure that the work is uh, represented at Friedrichshafen and I'm totally okay with that. So I'm very excited about being a part of that show because it's very SDR heavy and very technical. So good mm -hmm. news there. Right. And uh, can you connect me to Leonard? So that because we, we are chasing the same goal. And yes. We can work together. It. Yes. Yeah, uh, he's yes, absolutely. He's if you I mean, you've probably seen him on Slack um, yeah. and I'll I'll make sure that um, that he knows that you're trying to do the exact same thing and experiencing yep. the same issues here. He's uh, he's all in and very uh, very interested in us succeeding and wants to contribute. So it, he was, That's good. yeah, I've looked at his, I, I really appreciate the, the contribution that he's made uh, for the RF model. Mm -hmm. So the Python RF model is, is excellent. It's, it's exactly uh, what you need in order to compare all the stuff. So um, I'm mm -hmm. totally happy to, to have it and to, and to get, um, to find another person that thinks like we do. So yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'll make sure that that he knows that you're also dealing with the same stuff. When we gave the lab tour, we we pointed at the ZC706 and the ADR V937. Mm -hmm. And Anshul has the same thing, doing yeah. trying to do the same stuff. So so he's he's aware. Yeah, maybe if you can uh, maybe if that's helpful, you can create a channel for testing of ZC706. Either way, it's fine. Yes, yeah, we'll yeah. we'll we'll push through this week really hard on it because yeah. we need to swarm right. it and and get it done. Um, yep. And then lots of other stuff will get unlocked. Yeah, and can um, and Michelle, uh, like uh, I have, I have experience with scheduler and firmware, so I will also like to get involved in this one. Oh sure, absolutely. So yeah, um, just make me a part of whatever discussion you're having. Yeah, then we we will. Um, yeah, as soon as is there, what we'll do is we'll just publish everything as we go, hmm. and it'll hmm. all be, all it'll all be laid out, even if it doesn't work or if it's dumb. So we'll. Yep. Yeah, we'll do our usual thing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so yeah, welcome, welcome aboard. It'll be it'll be fun. This is uh, oftentimes this is really the heart of any of any communication system. This is where if you the decisions that you make directly affect the all of the features that you can leverage all the way down to the application layer. So it's no you know no joke. Oh yeah, yeah. And anybody with any experience here is is. Uh, deeply appreciated. My experience with schedulers is a little bit, uh, and I know uh, I know qu quite a bit about like the GNU Radio scheduler. Um, you know, mm -hmm. so really kind of focused on that. And it's it's a very it is a very focused system, but I le learned a lot uh, looking at it. The runtime scheduler. Um, so so I have I have an appreciation and a fear. So. <laughs> <laughs> and you know some some ideas and and uh yeah but but between i think with you and ken and me and and whoever else wants to to pitch in uh mm -hmm. that we can make a very decent um design so yep all right so yeah consider yourself on board awesome all right anybody else have any questions or needs any resources or has anything to add i can say a couple words about ori uh, the remote lab west here oh yeah please do yeah um, floor. as noted we had an actual person come and tour the facility which is very exciting um, as a side effect of that having leonard here in the house and trying to uh, work on vivado we realized that uh, working on a small screen is kind of painful and it'd be nice to be able to have vivado full screen <laughs> and i figured out how to do that in case anybody else has run into that problem uh, so the instructions are now in the in the manual in the document on setting up for the remote labs on the repo, and I also mentioned it on Slack. 
So I, I can now fill a 4K monitor with uh, a virtual machine using VNC and that works. Uh, much nicer environment if you have something like Vivado with a, a million user interface components. Other than that, nothing going on uh, new in the remote lab. I rebooted a couple of the VMs, software updates and so forth. I hope that didn't cause any disruption. And uh, carrying on. Yeah, thank you. Uh, for those of us with um, maybe compromised eyesight, the additional pixels are deeply appreciated. Uh, so, so if anybody else <laughs> has this particular challenge, then we have a solution. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Next week we'll meet again, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll be doing uh, lots of stuff for the for the August demo this week, and looking forward to giving some some good reports for our Friday a regular Friday report, which is in the, the um, it's in the repo and goes out to the mailing list. So if you're listening to this and you want to be more involved or if you want to uh, uh, see these reports and stuff, then I'll put a link at the end and you can you can join up. Thank you for everybody that supports the work and have a great week. Thank you.